Hey everyone, Jess here at Aero JM Farms. First I want to say welcome to the channel and thanks for giving me the opportunity to show you some of the methods I use for woven wire fence. All right, my goal for this video is to keep it short and to the point, but if it does tend to run a little bit long, uh, I'll probably end up making a separate video on some tools, tips, and tricks. And one of those tricks is how to get this wire straight, get a lot of the wave and uh, slack out of it on really uneven terrain, because none of my land here is, is flat, and so that was a big issue. Be sure and check that video out. Look for that, and I'll if I do end up making that, I'll post a link uh, in the comments below and also at the top of the screen. Now this fence I built, I'm building here is more for dogs than anything. Uh, that's why I chose to go with the horse wire uh, because we do have pups. The two by four, two inch by four inch wire uh, does a lot better at keeping puppies in. But I also want to say these same methods can be used for any type of woven wire fence, whether it be for goats, sheep, uh, hogs, you name it. Uh, even horses, bigger livestock. The only difference uh, for bigger livestock is you may choose to go with a bigger size post and that will give you a little bit better fence that can hold uh, the pressure that some of that bigger livestock is going to put on it. I have H braces where I'm going to put some of my heavier gates and the rest of my braces I'm actually using floating braces and I'll go over all those details and maybe you can use this video in building your own fence get some ideas and take some of the ideas and methods I'm using and apply that to your situation and your fence. So come on let's go check it out. Okay, here's one of my floating braces, and uh, this is actually, I think, what you'd call a knee brace. This isn't a full 90 coming in here, so it's not a true corner brace, but this, this, I'm having to follow the lay of this land, and there's a big edge, a cliff, a drop off right here. It's kind of like making a, uh, you know, a, an arc around this way, so what I've done is I put a knee brace here and a knee brace down there, and I use the floating brace style to accomplish that. And that just kept me from having to do a full, like a double H brace corner, because this is an obtuse angle here. Now here is an actual uh, corner brace, and I did this style as a double floating brace. So you, you can see going up that way, it's, it's, a, it's a floating brace that direction. Now I'll have another short length of fence here that'll go up that way. So just a little more detail on this before I start pulling this tension wire I come to the end here put a staple in not all the way just enough to uh, to hold this wire in place and then uh, you put another staple in here and that way you can loop this wire around I just do one loop and this is barbless uh, wire it's very similar to barbed wire just without the barbs and so I make that loop cut my wire and then I splice it very similar to how you just do a regular bar bar fence uh, just wrap put these together with uh, you know six to eight inches of overlap on each side and then come to the middle grab your pair of pliers and hold it right here so you can get some nice tight wraps you wrap this one over the top this way and when you come to this side you wrap it over the top the opposite direction so these are actually wrapped opposite directions and that helps you uh, helps these wraps hold really good you can tell, I'll, I'll show you on this side. Did all these. This is the loop that I made to run the, the tension wire through first. And I come up above that, put another staple, and then I slid a loose staple in down behind that so that the wire can rest on that staple and not cut into the wood. Also, with uh, floating braces, you need to have something good and solid uh, to set your brace post on the ground. You don't want the post just sitting right on the ground. That's going to loosen up over time, and as you tension this fence, it's just going to dig into the ground. It's going to be really hard to get the necessary tension on your fence. When you do get that tension on the fence, it's not going to hold. So find something like this block here. Uh, you can use flat rocks. You can use, uh, I've seen people use old discs, uh, harrow, the discs off the disc harrows. Just something that has a bigger footprint to rest this post on. 
and that will then put pressure back on this post for my twitch sticks I used this is either half inch or 5 8 rebar looks like it may be a little bigger than half inch it's just what I had I had a scrap stick of it so I just cut some maybe 18 to 20 inch uh, sections with a Metabo you could use wood if that's all you got I prefer to use uh, metal because it doesn't rot like wood you put uh, you put just regular old untreated wood in here and you know three or four years it's gonna be rotten probably and you're gonna lose tension in your fence so I will come back and add staples or uh, wrap a wire around just to keep that from going anywhere but you can see there is that does have some tension on it and so I like to secure these just to keep animals or kids from uh, knocking these loose and possibly hurting somebody it's more of a safety thing let me go over kind of how I put these together uh, with uh, with floating braces you want to you want the top of the brace where it meets the post to be about two-thirds of the height of your fence uh, I got a 48 inch fence 47 inch actual I think so I needed the top of my post my brace post to be approximately 32 inches it's it don't have to be exact but around that area so what I did is I held these posts up to my mark I got my marks and then I come in with a chainsaw and notch that out where my marks were then I put it up and did the temporary screws and with it screwed in temporary you can come into the back side and drill your hole down at an angle and then put those spikes in and those spikes I'll show you a little bit later what those look like it's not actual brace pins these are spikes uh, I call them spikes they just look like a big nail and I get those from Home Depot and it's a lot more economical than using actual brace pins so here you can see the spike for that brace post and like I said I, I drill those down at an angle and to me this is I think this is gonna be a really secure method I see some brace uh, floating braces constructed by drilling the hole down this way and I prefer using and then putting the spike in I prefer putting a spike in on this side of the post so that if there is tension pushing up this way on this post which there is when you tension it that's to me it's less likely that this will pull out and then your brace post will just you know fall off and you lose tension in your fence so I much prefer putting it in the back and at an angle so any tension that's pushing up it's gonna hold that kind of went over how I did the floating braces and I thought I'd go over real quick uh, the H braces and I've done these very similar to uh, if you've watched any other H brace videos these are going to be built pretty similar to those so as you can tell we got our main post set on the ground I marked about where I wanted this to be and I tried to get I tried to get this brace post even with this second wire right here you can even go as high as the top wire, but that's just where I chose to do it. It's not rocket science. Uh, you know, it's a fence. I got that marked, drilled a hole with my bit, and these are the spikes. Oh yeah, I'll show you those here in just a second. These are the spikes I've, I've talked about before. Instead of the actual fence brace pins, these spikes are a lot cheaper. And I think they're, they're about 3 8 inch thick, so they're plenty. There's a brace wire talked about my twitch sticks I like to use and I just did one wrap of this barbless wire or one loop I spliced it together just like you would a barbed wire fence and then put the twitch stick in and go to twisting a little bit of detail on the bottom I've got a staple put in horizontal and I come through and put just slide two staples down into that and that keeps that brace wire from coming into the the wood. I'm sure you can tell where I got these from. Uh, any hardware store ought to have something like this. Just now, uh, that's maybe nine, ten inches long, somewhere around there. And these work good. I think I end up using a half inch bit because that's what I had. Uh, kind of a longer bit, so they were a little bit loose going in not a big issue 
is you want to leave a little bit sticking out right here so that your brace wire will ride on that and then you don't have to do this I actually like similar to how you do the bottom put a vertical staple and then slide a staple behind that so that your brace wire lands on that staple and that keeps all that from uh, cutting in the wood so that is H brace I got a corner brace over here and it's pretty much done the same way it's pretty much an H brace or like a double H brace but you put a 90 in it I did double brace wires on these because I'm gonna have gates and I want that extra support when that gate is is hanging out here and you got all that weight you need something pulling right here to help counteract that now on a single on a brace with no gate I just do one wire and you want your wire I say I say leaning the, the direction of the fence so my fence is going this way my brace wire is this way and what that does I've got it attached down here at the ground attached up here so it's pulling from the ground right there which is your strongest point on that post and it's going to transfer when you tighten this up it's going to transfer that force back to the, on this brace post and then back and then to the top of this corner and that's where you get your strength from so when you put your fence in and your fence is pulling on the top of this this brace is actually counteracting that force pushing back that direction all right i also want to mention my main posts that i got on the ground here these are eight foot posts my brace posts are six foot posts the main posts i was shooting for anywhere from three to four feet in the ground you know three and a half somewhere around there most of these i did go definitely more than three feet i didn't use concrete <clears throat> this this hill once you get or you can see it's, it's red clay I'm not gonna have any problem with these going anywhere once you know this which it's all kind of settled in now we've had some rain a little bit of rain on it I don't think any concrete was necessary in this case um, also these are fairly short runs this it's not like a quarter mile of fence that I'm stretching here so for those reasons I chose to forego the concrete and just I tamp these in and I don't know if you've ever tamped in clay, it, it tamps in pretty tight. So brace posts normally, the general rule of thumb is you want your brace post to be two to two and a half times the height of your fence. It's 48 inch fence, four feet tall. Normally you'd want at least an eight foot brace post. I mentioned these were six foot. Again, uh, these are short runs uh, just for dogs. If you were gonna do bigger livestock, you might want to go ahead and and do the eight foot post especially if they're longer runs the longer this brace post is the stronger this brace is going to be but for smaller animals dogs uh goat sheep things like that this this will be sufficient this will be plenty it's not going anywhere uh, so i just wanted to say you can build all this with uh, basic hand tools um i've accumulated some tools over the years so i'm blessed to have some some good tools that that make life a little easier. You now I like to say you can you can spend time and save money or you can spend a little money on tools and save a lot of time and to me there is a, a lot of value in time especially when it comes to family and doing things around the farm. And so I did drill most of my uh, main holes with an auger on the tractor. You can use uh, post hole diggers. I've done that for years so that is an option but uh, I will say the auger was a lot quicker I do have a video on that. Uh, I'll post that in the description and a link up top so you can check that out. Alright, so hopefully it ain't getting too dark here. <clears throat> I've got to put T-posts in on this back side. i got to finish it. So basically I got that measured off. Uh, I spaced. I got marked uh, my T-post spacing. And one important fencing tool is this right here. That's a string line. So I've got that going from corner to corner basically and that's going to give me a straight line to set my t-posts on so that's that's very important when you're building fence if you want a nice straight fence you need a straight line a lot of people use uh, just a strand of barbed wire if you're doing a barbed wire fence or a lot of people will do uh, a strand of barbed wire on the bottom 
and then come back and put maybe like a four by four goat fence or sheep fence uh, something like that but I still like to have a straight fence and uh, that'll help it last longer too it keeps keeps the tension of the fence even this is the wire I'm using uh, I just got this at the local Atwoods uh, range master horse fence galvanized wire like I said before it's a it's a two by four wire this says I know you probably can't see that but pre-stripped roll show you what that means you've got about 20 inches of wire here that you have to, to be able to wrap around your end post that's what they mean pre-strip that way you don't have to sit here and twist off all of these knots this post just temporary <clears throat> so I got to go down here and splice on another row and I'll show you that and I'm gonna actually come back and pull from this end because this is a longer stretch so I want to pull I want to pull this longer stretch out and then I'll I'll kind of work it around some of my corner my brace posts up there so we'll go up here and I'll get this uh, get this other partial row pulled out and start get it started splicing onto this row and I'll show you how I'm gonna do that. Splicing these uh, pre-strip rolls. So I've already got, we got a lot of length here on both ends. So I'm just going to come over here and two and a half to three inches, snip these off, and I'm going to take these vertical wires and just butt them together. And then this roll on the right is going to come across and wrap around these, and this roll will go across and wrap around. The, uh, the other side.
the tool I really like for doing woven wire. I use this on the end posts when you're terminating and also these splices and it's it's small enough that you can get it in this 2x4 wire so let's see if I can do this this angle I'm just going to twist it around and it puts a nice twist on that wire Real tight. So that. Let's do this one. Like I said I'd like to get at least a twist on it and get it started. Highly, highly recommend this tool if you're going to be doing some woven wire. And they're not expensive at all. Probably for less than the price of a, a energy drink. This will save you a lot of time. It's, it's I mean, it's, it's doable, but it's kind of a pain in the neck having to wrap this around oh, with just hands. And especially this 2x4 wire. So, get you one of these. This one happens to be by red brand and I don't remember the exact cost of it I think maybe three or four dollars somewhere around there that's a uh, pretty dark here so I don't know how good this is gonna come through but it's gonna show you a little mistake I made you know here at uh, I don't know about your farmer ranch but uh, here at Earl JM farms we live in the real world and we make mistakes so kind of wanted to show you what I got so my, I knew this was going to be close because I pulled a, a full piece on that back side and this was a partial piece I'd already taken some off of. So I knew I was, I knew I was going to be close having the right length for this pull. But this, I'm actually, it's a little bit short. So what I'm doing is I'm taking some of those long tails I had from this, those pre-strip rolls that I cut off and I'm tying them in right here to give me a little bit of extra length just to make it on around that pole and then tie back in. So I've got these pieces here. This helps if I uh, hold it with a pair of pliers. I'm going about a space and a half. So I'm going to hold up my pliers to get that through there and get it get a wrap started. And I'm going to take my handy dandy tool that I told you about. wrap it and I'm gonna go down through here and do this on all these wires you know mistakes happen you just deal with them as they come uh, I don't care how many fences you build you're gonna or anything I don't care how much experience you got everything you do and every time you do it is there's gonna be learning experiences
just thought I'd try to get you a little close up of these little knots here and how well that's coming across on camera. I'm just grabbing kind of front edge right here and then where it wraps around that vertical on the back. I'm going to squeeze and then just twist my pliers and it actually loosens that up. I'll go across and do all the tops and I'll come back and do all the bottoms. And I'll pretty much be loose enough to where you can just slide them off. Alright folks, you can see I got this post here terminated. You can see, maybe, it's still pretty tight. Uh, I'm going to come back and put my T-post clips on. And probably, with this terrain, kind of it goes up and down different spots. By the time I get it on my fence post, uh, lined up where I need to be, it'll actually probably take some more of that slack out. So I think with that, <clears throat> I'm probably going to wrap this video up. Uh, be on the lookout for a tips, tricks, uh, and tools that come in really handy for this woven wire and probably even barbed wire for that matter. And then I'm also going to do a gate build video. I'm going to build my own wood gates and just fill them with this, this same wire because I'll have some left over. Alright folks, I'm going to end the video here. I just want to say thanks again for watching. If you found this useful, uh, valuable, or just enjoyed watching, which was my goal for the video is to really give you some value and some things you can you can take out of it and use yourself. If that's the case, please like this video, consider subscribing, and uh, hopefully you'll come back and check out some more videos. Again, thanks, and we'll see you in the next video.